All right, in honor of it being so hot outside, I figured we'd tear into this small fan and find out exactly what went wrong inside. Um, I've got a pretty good idea of what failed. I, I'm going to state at the beginning of the video, this this is not the Spall fan's fault failing. Um, it has to do with using a PWM controller that doesn't have a sufficient cycle rate for the FETs or transistors, uh, uh, causing the most likely causing the brushes to fail inside of the unit. So um, this is a, a balanced unit at the factory. Spall will not repair it. It is not, you can't change the motor on it because then the balance will be off and cause it to fail again. So pretty much when one of these suckers goes bad, um, it's, it's not repairable um, unless, you know, you find a way to balance it, which you might be able to, but uh, it, it, for all intents and purposes, Spall says they won't repair them. They say if it goes bad, throw it out. Um, so again, uh, it's probably not the fault of Spall why it failed. It has to do with using a PWM controller on it. Spall says do not use PWM with it, or if you do, 7 kilohertz switching frequency, which was not the case in using the Flexalite controllers that I had. So um, this is just kind of a for fun kind of a thing. We're going to tear th tear this open, get the motor open, and uh, see what went wrong inside, because I'm pretty curious. It sounds to me like it's got a broken brush. So uh, let's get into this thing. All right, so to say that this thing is not serviceable would be an understatement. Um, <laughs> pretty tight press fit even after taking the uh, lock ring the c-clip off of here um, pretty tight fit to the fan I had to beat it so much that I you know to get it off of there so obviously it's not designed to ever come apart and then uh, I just drilled out the rivets that are integral to the part of the brush cap back here um, so I just drilled them out I'm gonna split it I already started to split it but I wanted to show this before I took it apart um, this is a decent size motor. I mean, it is heavy, which suggests that it, that a, the windings, it's got a lot of windings in it and that the magnets are relatively heavy inside of it. Um, these are high torque motors. I mean, these are good quality, large motors. Um, you know, it, it goes with the spall name. They do make a good product. Um, but uh, I just wanted to show what these motors look like. And um, I'd say this motor is probably about 10 pounds. It's, uh, it's not light, 8 to 10 pounds easily. So uh, let's get the brush cap off the back of this thing. All right, so it's apart. Um, I started taking the brush rigging apart, and I didn't want to get too far along before I described what happened here. Um, so kind of what I suspected based on the noise that it was making. Um, it's a little bit difficult to see here, but you can see how the brush has some grooves carved in it. Um, that's not normal. Uh, obviously, we had some scoring going on. It's uh, most likely from arcing inside from the PWM. Too low of a frequency PWM would cause arcing. Um, this brush, this didn't happen when I took it apart either. I mean, the edge of the brush is broken. There's a chip miss missing on the corner. They're all scored. Now, something interesting that I did notice as soon as I took this apart is uh, I took, by the way, I took this brush out. I took this brush apart, so I took the springs out already. They were all, they're all spring-loaded, if you know how a DC motor works, these, these brushes. Uh, spring-loaded and as they wear it pushes further and further into the commutator uh, of the motor um, so you know they do have a limited life but uh, you know they should last a considerable amount of time number of years before they wear out um, but anyways they should all be spring-loaded like this and full travel this brush does not have full travel and it is because you can see the spring is all cocked in there See how the side of the spring is sticking out of the side of the brush holder there? That's not right. So that actually could have been the reason that this failed. Um, there, I've got it to unstick, but see, it's it's bound up inside. So, yeah, it's still not right. See, the spring is sticking out of the side of the brush holder. So that could be part of the reason that this failed, but that would suggest a defect, and I just don't know that that's the case. Um, like I said, the PWM frequency 
of the Flexalite controllers is a very is very low. It's in the hertz range, you know, somewhere around one to two hundred hertz at low speed. Um, or well, the switching frequency is just somewhere around one hundred to one hundred and fifty hertz. I should actually hook one of them up to the scope to see what it is. Um, but uh, much too low per Spall suggestion. Spall actually says don't use PWM. Period. Um, I find that a little bit unacceptable. Um, this is the brush cap. Look at the amount of debris that's inside of here. Yeah, it's not normal. These fans only have a few hundred miles on them, maybe, maybe, maybe 500 miles. Um, so obviously something went sideways inside of this motor. Um, could be because of PWM causing vibration and arcing, which would cause issues. The, the commutator actually doesn't look too bad. Um, yeah, it doesn't look bad at all to me, really. It's got some grooves in it, but for sure the brushes have grooves cut in them. And like I said, it was it, it was clicking pretty bad internally. So uh, obviously there's an issue if you look at these brushes and they have grooves carved in them. So anyways, this is just a quick forensic on the small fan failure that I had. Um, I've replaced it with a new fan. Um, and I've also installed the HF125 from Autocool Guy. Uh, I did a video on that if you want to know more about those controllers. But it is a high frequency, high switching frequency controller, uh, high current, about 125 amp capability. So um, that is the replacement uh, controller for my Flexalite controllers. Um, so uh, this is pretty typical DC motor failure we're looking at here. There's a commutator brush issue. Um, it could very well be that this brush got cocked in there from uh, oscillation inside from the PWM, which uh, would then cause a bad connection to the commutator and cause arcing and, you know, kind of a catastrophic failure here. So it's not as bad inside as I thought it would be, but it's definitely, there's definitely issues. There's broken chips off the brushes and they're, and they're grooved. So I was taking one last look at this thing before I 86 it and uh, literally had already thrown it in the trash can. Uh, and I thought about it right as I noticed something, uh, as I was throwing it away. Uh, I looked at the back side of the fan, and I noticed it was chewed up a little bit in here. You can see it there. So the, the way that this works, you probably don't know what I'm looking at. There's a pin that's uh, through the cross, cross through the shaft right here. So there's pins, there's a, there's a bore across the shaft, there's a pin in here. I did notice that the pin was broken when I pulled it apart, but I thought it happened. I thought that I broke the pin off when I was hammering it out, but now I get to looking at it. I don't think so. Um, because, you know, I did talk about how the comm doesn't look too bad on this thing. The brushes are chipped up and they don't look great, but they sure don't look like they were making the noise that I was hearing in it. And, um, I started noticing as I looked at this, the metal's chewed up around here uh, where this bearing is pressed in and the bearing seal is torn. The bearing seal is torn right there. I think what happened, um, this is just a guess on my part, but I'm relatively certain what happened. And I still think that it's the fault of the fan controller. And I'll explain why in a second. This, I think that this pin broke. I, I did find the piece when I took it apart. I think it was ro I think it was rolling around in there. And if you look at the fan, it's it's chewed up in here pretty good, chewed up. It was rolling around in there. It was that that's the noise that I was hearing. I'm certain of it now. That pin broke off. The pin is a real hard material. And I think what happened is, there is a lot of shuddering that goes on with this motor because. When your PWM frequency is real low, which, uh, and I cover it in another video if you want to check it out about the uh, Flexalite controller and how low the frequency, the switching frequency is uh, for that controller. Um, I think that shuttering fatigued this pin and that pin broke inside and it started rolling around in there because it was busted off and it chewed it up. That's the only explanation. Obviously the pin obviously the pin was broken that's the only explanation there but um i'm pretty certain that it probably fatigued from the from the horrible vibration that there was inside of this thing when it was pwming um so it 
It vibrated enough, the pin fractured, it broke one side of it off, it rolled around in here, and that's what was grinding around in here. So now I know what's going on. I just didn't notice it at first. I noticed the pin that was broken, but I didn't think anything of it. I figured I busted it off when I was hammering this out, but now I get to looking at it. I never pushed the shaft into this bearing. I never pushed it out. It's still proud of the bearing uh, race here or the, the inside of the, the inside race. So, uh, I think that's the root cause. I think, uh, it fatigued, it broke off from vibration. It started rolling around in there and it chewed itself up. So there's your failure, uh, still due to the PWM frequency. I'm certain of that, especially seeing that the Flexalite, uh, uh, PWM frequency is only about 44 Hertz. Uh, that's, it's really slow. So anyways, uh, this is the root cause. Uh, that, that's a root cause analysis on this.